Uh, welcome to our first live sessions from the Civil Engineering Department at the University of Goa. Uh, I'm Dr. Nabil Ahmed, uh, the chairperson of the Civil Engineering Department. I did my postdoc and PhD in Civil Engineering from the University of London, Australia. Uh, with me is Dr. Tamur Mazafi. I'm the graduate coordinator and head of research at the Department of Civil Engineering. Um, I did both my bachelor's and my PhD from the University of Nottingham. Uh, so this is a, a live session. So we will be uh, we will wish to hear more from you uh, rather than us telling you. So if you have any question, any comment, please feel free to drop your comment and uh, we'll be happy to answer your queries. Uh, so first of all, uh, what is civil engineering and uh, why you may be interested in civil engineering? Uh, we will be briefly talking about uh, your career in civil engineering, what is civil engineering and what do we offer in civil engineering at the University of Goa? So first of all, what is civil engineering? Okay, so the term civil engineering is quite a recent one, I'd say from 1700 or so on, but that did not mean that people did not construct structures or things on from before that time. As you can see in this picture, these are the great pyramids of Giza. Um, this was constructed, I think in the BCs by the Egyptians. And even now they remain a marble because uh, at that time they did not have any specialized equipment to create such huge structures. So uh, even during that time, people were always motivated to construct and make beautiful, large uh, structures. Exactly. So it is one of the oldest professions that is known to us. Um, in this picture, you can see the Roman aqueducts. So aqueducts, essentially, they are these huge, long uh, bridges that carry water from reservoir, from, uh, from uh, drinkable water or clean water to houses, plazas, things like that. So Romans were the first people to invent them. Um, and once again, the goal was to provide clean water to the citizens, the Roman citizens, something like that. So this is what civil engineers do. We're trying to build humanity's environment. The term civil engineering was coined after military engineering because civil engineering is meant for civilians. It is engineering for and by civilians to ensure that the quality of life is optimal. So if I add here, Dr. Chalmasha, with your permission, is that uh, the civilization, so people long ago were living in forest and they were living uh, uh, away from the, uh, the civilization. So what is basically that civilization is that um, uh, with the passage of time, they learned how to uh, build houses for themselves. Uh, they learned uh, how to build roads uh, to commute. Uh, they learned how to build dams uh, for the supply of clean water. So all these things comes under the civilization. So uh, with the humanity, the civilization is actually civil engineering. Yeah. You can even say that would a society be considered civilized if it did not have civil engineering? Exactly. And in this picture, you can see after centuries, the progress uh, civil engineers have made towards a society. And that is essentially what we do. The goal of a civil engineer is to engineer the environment. Anywhere where society lives or works or um, uses, occupies, the civil engineer is oriented towards accommodating and making roads so that things are accessible, making structures so that uh, people can live in a safe and secure environment and things like that. One thing that I really liked about civil engineering is that since the beginning and even now, as long as there's society or civilization, there will be a need for somebody to construct things for society. There will be a need for civil engineers. So it is considered almost like a forever profession. And that's one thing that really intrigued me. So like we have this huge, so like the Roman Colosseum or the whole structure that is still standing today, a great benchmark for those year, people from thousands of years ago that their constructions are still there and people still visit them and marvel at them. So what is civil engineering really? I mean, to this point, uh, you, you learned that what is civil engineering in terms of the 
civilization and what it is of the history. Right? Yes, so, exactly. Uh, but the difficult question is how, like, what is this civil engineering really? So there's specialized field of the civil engineering, like the water resources, the geotechnical, the construction management, structural and transportation. And the fundamental uh, specialization field, they offer different purposes uh, and it's fine. Like uh, if you go to the structural engineering, uh, what we do in structural engineering that we uh, build safe houses uh, for, the build, uh, for the people or for the storage or any other particular purpose which can help uh, the humankind. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, we do simulation as a structural engineer, we do simulation, we do analysis, we analyze the forces, we analyze the loads. And based on those analysis, uh, we design structure uh, serving the purpose, both uh, the safety and the required loads condition. And to make it look aesthetic so that people would want to visit, would want to stay in the Exactly. And then uh, if we go deeper to the structural engineering, uh, with the passage of time, is uh, uh, like we uh, uh, will understand this thing that with the passage of time, the structures may deteriorate uh, uh, due to the environmental conditions, uh, the surrounding conditions, which which can affect that that could be any condition. So we do uh, restore those buildings. So for that restoring or rehabilitation, we again do proper simulation analysis, and then we recommend some uh, possible solution for that thing. So that is uh, the extended version of structure in any kind of way. Even the you know things like Taj Mahal or Mohenjo-daro, these civilizations. So we still want to keep the heritage alive. So civil engineers do play a pivotal role in ensuring that you know the structures stay, the structures are structurally sound. And things like that. So exactly as Dr. Taimu mentioned, like uh, that uh, uh, the Taj Mahal, the Kela Bala Hissa, uh, and or uh, Peshawar, or the Shahi Kela in Lahore, uh, you might have seen uh, scaffolding or the civil engineering work going on there. Uh, it is to preserve those buildings. So with the passage of time, is there is a restoration and rehabilitation is required because of the uh, deterioration. So we structural engineer, we civil engineer to provide that uh, that thing. And the next, uh, civil, uh, the next specialized field in civil engineering is geotechnical engineering. Uh, what we do in geotechnical engineering is that we make sure uh, that the, uh, the soil, uh, the, the, the ground that we excavate, uh, that soil is stable uh, to hold uh, the soil and surrounding or uh, to hold that structure. Because once you dig, you won't find uh, a favorable condition all the time. You have to treat that soil uh, for a particular purpose. So in geotechnical engineering, we do uh, that kind of stuff. You need to make sure that, you know, when you have a structure and you've designed it and it looks amazing, but if we didn't investigate the soil below it, it can just crack. In fact, you see a lot of uh, small construction in Pakistan, which have settlements and huge cracks running along the structure because the soil has shifted below. So that's where geotechnical engineering comes in. Comes in thank you. And uh, similarly, in the geotechnical engineering, uh, once we mine, uh, like uh, again for the civilization, we need many resources from the from the ground. So once you dig at every step, we make sure that it is now safe to go deeper, uh, and it won't uh, harm the, the the people working there and the surrounding. So uh, that is another purpose of the geotechnical engineering. That with the mining, our our purpose is the uh, has the pivotal role. And we need to make sure that uh, it's safe to go deeper and it is safe for the, uh, for the society of the surrounding. Uh, another specialized field of the civil engineering is hydraulics and hydrology. Uh, and this field, we make sure that uh, we are safe from the floods, the, the water is properly stored. And then that stored water is used for drinking and uh, other uh, water supply purposes of our daily use. And at the same in the hydraulics and hydrology engineering, we make sure the proper drainage system, so um, we stay clean, we stay safe in our houses. Another specialized field of the civil engineering is the traffic or the highway or the transportation engineering. And the specialized field, we use to make sure that the, uh, that the roads that you travel, that you use for your commute, they are safe for you and the surrounding uh, as well. 
And interestingly, uh, uh, if you're a computer lover, uh, if you want to do things on the computers, uh, there is a lot to explore in the civil engineering. We do simulations, we do coding, we develop softwares, uh, and the purpose is a civilization and serving your community and your society. Uh, here you can see uh, a simulation based uh, snap of a, of a software tool or analysis tool on the right side, uh, and, the, and the purpose is served on the left side. So uh, uh, the serving in civil engineering is at different levels, uh, and it goes beyond uh, and people, varies. Yeah. yeah. People often take granted with things like building roads or tunnels. Like, for example, a lot of regions in KP were very difficult to get to. But now with the recent construction of like, the tunnels or the roads, um, tourism has boosted. People can visit these cities. But it's not just that. If you look at more urban areas, like in Islamabad or Karachi, you always have traffic. You have a lot of cars. So you have to key, you have to make sure that they navigate well, that you're minimizing waiting time for people. And of course, this is a work in progress, and you still need civil engineers to go in this field to have better plans to ensure that, you know, um, uh, like the roads are built correctly in the correct places, depending on what the function of that location is for people. Yeah. And then another specialized field of the civil engineering is disaster management. So what we do in the disaster management that we uh, that we uh, try and we design the system, the, the civil engineering uh, damage control system. By damage control system, I mean to say that you try to prevent the large scale damage. How we do that, that we do use to analyze the, the data, we use to protect data, and then we provide recommendation that uh, um, there, there is a possibility that this sort of activity can happen in future. So you, you, you design accordingly, you, 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 you make necessary preparation for that thing. And as I earlier mentioned, uh, with the advancement and the technological advancement, of course, uh, we do these things on the computer, we do simulations, and there's so much fun uh, and, the, and the certain specialized field, not in certain, and all, the, and all of this specialized field of the civil engineering. Yeah, this is interesting because it's a combination of different things. You have hydrology or hydrology to worry about if you're worrying about river flows, things like that. But then you also have structural stability. You have geotech in there as well. I remember like one of our undergraduate design projects was on the glacier flooding, I think Hamza and Hamza something. One of our graduate students studied on the Kabila, uh, uh, the dam, the Kabila dam and things like that. So um, it is, uh, and one other thing that's interesting is that when people think of civil, they like, oh, structures on field and things like that. But nowadays, it has become very interdisciplinary. We have predictive AI, we have machine learning. Uh, in order to predict disasters, in order to mitigate them, sometimes the um, singular computations are very difficult. It's very hard to do. So we rely on machine learning, deep learning, provided data so that we can predict how things can go so that we can tell you, oh, please don't construct here. This AI might be a risky zone. Uh, you can construct a dam here, but be careful of this side of things like that. So all this comes under also disaster management. Yeah. And another specialized field of the civil engineering is construction management. Uh, in the construction management, we need to make sure the proper and manageable use of the resources, whether it's human resources or the materials, uh, the finances, uh, and we do it at a large scale, we properly manage what resource can be used at a particular time uh, and how effectively it can be used. And as I earlier mentioned, with the advancement and the technology with the artificial intelligence and the machine learning tools, um, things have been made more interesting in, the, in this specialized field of the civil engineering. Yeah, like in both these pictures, they're both simulations. On the left, you can see people uh, doing HVAC, like heating, ventilation, plumbing, these sort of things. And you have to design them in such a way that they don't clash with the structure. Like, you know, you, you need to provide water, but of course, it can't go through structural beams or things like that. So instead of discovering that, unfortunately, on site, we simulate it on a computer so that we can predict it, we can know beforehand. On the right is also another thing, virtual reality. When you have construction management, you have a lot of clients who have no idea how this works, what they want. So recently, we've gotten into VR. What we do is that we put them in the simulation, we show them, okay, look, this is how much the height, the height of the ceiling is. This is how it looks on the inside. 
so that they have a better idea going into it. And this is very valuable, especially for clients of you, because they understand the project can get them much more efficient in this way. Exactly. And here, um, I like this because uh, on the left is a picture of a bridge of suspension bridge, and on the right is a dam. This is where all the different specializations of civil engineers, they all unite and work towards these structures. Think about it, for a bridge, you need to have very good foundations. You need geotechnical engineers there. Then you have the structural engineers who build the structure, of course. The road will be done by the transportation uh, or the traffic engineers. How it will go, what the capacity will carry, where it will go from, these things are for the planners. And of course, for these scales, uh, these large scale projects, you need management. You need proper management to ensure all the inventory is there, the risks are minimized. Same for a dam. A dam is actually a very large structure. And if not constructed properly, it can be very, very dangerous for the vicinity of that area because you're really holding such a huge amount of water back. So you need the hydrology people there, you need the geotech people there, you need to consider seepage, settlement, things like that. So these are good examples of every facet of a civil engineer coming together in one giant project. All right, so let's see if you got us any question. Let's scroll the comments and see if you got any question for us. Then we will continue, obviously. So, and if you haven't got any question, uh, so far, please feel free to drop a question. I can't see any questions. Uh, I got a couple of comments. Uh, let's see what are they. I'm trying to go to the comment sections. Okay, so please, if you have any question, please feel free to drop the uh, question and comments. We will come back to your comments later. Uh, let's continue with our journey and understanding of the civil engineering. Um, the next is uh, like, uh, so far you have learned the civil engineering and uh, what civil engineering can offer. Now let's see what could be the benefits of civil engineering profession. What do you get from this career? Um, so this is a picture of a fish farm project. It is in Garo Sin. Um, and this was uh, one of my projects. I, uh, I will be consulting for this. And one thing, once again, apart from liking the fact that civil engineering is such a long-term field, one thing that's interesting is when I designed this project, I offered them a few uh, you know, support that, okay, you need to construct like this and that. And that was it. But later, when I go to, to Google Maps and go to Garo Sin, I can see this, and it is a large structure. So uh, it makes me feel, of course, I take a lot of pride in it that, okay, I designed it there and it actually gets made. And it's a legacy for you. And if you're a civil engineer, you can continue to make these sort of structures in the future as well. Right? So these structures may live long after you, and it's a very good. Um, since a reminder, sense of pride of okay, so. so there are innumerable uh, opportunities for you. Like um, uh, if you take a pause and if you want to Google it, Google it right away and you will find your career in the construction sector, the uh, consultancy sector and the maintenance sector. What, they, uh, what do they offer largely? Uh, you can help in contributing uh, by contributing in the construction sector by building new structures or the, do the construction part, uh, getting your uh, hands dirty. Or you can provide the uh, consultancy services. People can ask you about the uh, particular problem and you can solve that problem using your knowledge. And then obviously there will be complex things. I mean, uh, building is damaged and the survival of that building is required um, because of many reasons. So you do the maintenance thing. Uh, but the point here is that if you Google it right away, you will find several and many opportunities even in Pakistan for the civil engineer uh, in the civil engineering sector. Yeah, like we said before, it's it's a long lasting field. As long as there's society, there will be a need for civil engineers in one way or another. Uh, one thing I kind of like, this is kind of misleading to say it's an easy field. It's not particularly easy. But what you can say is that civil engineering out of the different engineering fields is less technical, but it requires a lot more communication. Think about it. If you're at uh, a site or if you're working for a client, 
you have to interact with a lot of people. Many of them are not civil engineers. So you have to communicate things like why is having such a large column necessary, for example, things like that. Uh, and because of that, what you need is that you need to be a person who can communicate, um, uh, who can stand up and say, no, this is how it works and things like that. So I like this aspect of engineering, of meeting people, conveying ideas, things like that. So it's not, as along with the technical side, you have to present the findings you are. Another thing I like about civil engineering, about the field, is that it is very adaptable. We've talked about the difference in civil engineering fields, but a lot of these are covered in the fundamentals during the undergrad, the graduate study here. So um, it's a very adaptable field. Of course, you go there, you have to do some structure, but at the same time, you might be required to do some project management as well, right? Um, you might be required to take a list of inventory, things like that. Or you might be a civil engineer working with a lot of different uh, uh, fields of people, non-engineering, engineering managers, clients. You know. So uh, as a civil engineer, it gives you this sort of flexibility that can jump into one domain to another domain. You can pursue different things based on your interests. So I felt a lot more uh, freedom in this field, per se. Another thing is that as a civil engineer, you are in a place of power. Um, you will often be leading people and you'll be telling them, hey, this is how to construct these things, how to do the pouring for the concrete for the site, or for management is how to cut our risks and things like that. So we have to display strong leadership skills. And so that in this way, when you study here, we will require you have a very strict uh, research program. We require you to present your findings, to communicate, to argue your case, to justify why you think the structure should be like this, or the soil stability should be this, things like that. So even in the field, you will always have a team, though you will always be responsible and you will have to show some leadership aspects, which is one of the fun. Yeah, so with this, uh, the leadership, and trust me, when you, uh, when you lead a project and once you complete a project uh, and, uh, and the leadership role, uh, you cannot imagine uh, the happiness and the and the feeling inside once you see things going and at their final stage being a civil engineer that's trust me that is a different kind of feeling so with the leadership and responsibility in civil engineering is serving the society serving the civilization so that feeling is double when you see the thing matured or built and when you have a strong team as well yes it's just like a well functioning machine automatic they know what to do um, and that's a really great feeling. And this leads us, this is a very similar aspect, which is the sociability aspect of it. A civil engineer typically will never work alone. Um, because of the scale of these projects and things like that, you always have to work with people, whether they are engineers or not. So communication of design, how do you convey your design? How do you um, convince people to work together, how do you, um, like they say, talk about HVAC, things like that, or mechanical engineers, things like that. Everybody has to work together. So, communication, not just of design, but on site, these things are drastic, but you learn to live with other people. Uh, it's a very sociable environment. You don't have to work alone. Uh, you might have seen uh, different kinds of communication between people and their respective fields. Like, once you go to a medical professional, they write you a prescription. For us civil engineers, drawing is a way of communication. You communicate your thoughts, your knowledge, your expertise, your consultation through drawings. So there is so much fun in this drawing because what the advancement, and I'm repeatedly uh, mentioning this advancement in the technology, the artificial intelligence things, the, the handy things when you do it with the computer or with a pen or with a touch, and you, you build a, a, a drawing, and then you communicate through your drawing. That that's really fascinating and interesting and lovely. It's like we have a different language. Yes, exactly. So. And helping the society. Think of it this way: uh, we civil engineers save more lives than a medical professional because once we build, uh, once we are building, or once we build a structure, we need to make sure during the process or before the process that that particular building should be safe for the people living in that building. The people should be safe inside that building. And if we are designing a road, we need to make sure and we make sure that that road is safe for the people traveling on that road. And similarly for the dams and 
any other specialized field of the civil engineering, we always make sure that the people living or using that service are safe in the particular civil engineering. So think of us as medical professionals, and we are way more than that. Yeah, a patient is like society. Yes. Yes. Like imagine uh, connecting a road, a well-built road that goes from a rural village to an urban area. Now suddenly that village has access to uh, hospitals, to amenities they did not have. Things are suddenly streamlined. So these are the sort of ways we try to help society. So we're treating it and things like that. Another aspect is the practicality of it. I like the hands-on experience of civil engineering. You go on site, you're always moving, you're doing things, you're communicating, you're looking at large structures, scaffolding, things like that. So at one time, yeah, you did, we communicated it on our design, but the next aspect is bringing it to life, right? So getting everybody together, ensuring things are there, being practical. You will always have a lot of improvisations that you need to do on site because nothing is ideal, right? And that's where really a sense of practicality of being like, okay, we have this, but we have this. What can we do? What can we do today? How do we minimize this issue? What do we do here? Um, weather can change, things like that. So how do you accommodate for that? That sense of practicality is a lot of fun. So yeah, as Dr. Tamu mentioned, like uh, uh, there's so much fun when you play with the concrete itself on site. So think it of this way, like there is a thought process, right? Once uh, you're trying to design a building, you go to the thought process, then you sit on the computer, you do simulation, you do the analysis. And then comes the fun part that you go on site and you play with the concrete. You take a shower, you start doing things yourself. So in the civil engineering, there is so much fun in every aspect. You go to the thought process, you got the ideas, and you got the analysis and simulation, and then you start uh, getting your hands dirty. So at every step, there is so much fun in that. Yeah. Like one interesting question that's also almost a field in itself is that when you have a very confined urban space and you need to construct a large multi-story tower, like how do you get the equipment there? How do you position yourself to construct it? If you're bringing concrete from somewhere else, what if that mixer gets stuck in a traffic jam? If the concrete gets hardened, then we, we just lost the mixer. So you have to be practical. You have to think on the spot that, okay, let's do this, let's do that. You have to accommodate, you have to be flexible. But this is really interesting. So then a question comes to mind uh, so much about civil engineering that why you're civil engineering at the University of Law. I would ask this question this way, why not? So the first reason is that we are PEC, Pakistan Engineering Council's level two accredited program. And this is the highest level that Pakistan Engineering Council can offer currently in Pakistan. And we are at that top level. And it got the benefit is that, uh, the benefit of this uh, level two accredited program is that uh, you get the Washington Accord and the Sydney Accord recognition with this uh, level of accredited program, uh, which means that once you are graduated, you get your PC certification immediately after your graduation, and your graduation is internationally recognized. Uh, most commonly in Pakistan, this sort of system is known as the outcome based education, uh, where the focus is made, made on the outcome rather than teaching. By this, I mean to say uh, we focused on the student that they have learned and where is uh, there is any deficiency. We try to overcome that thing over the time. We point and don't judge. We need to so that it's not just theory once again. Because of the way this field works, you need to be practical at times. So the OBE kind of ensures that we are moving things from that perspective. Exactly. Uh, the second reason for, uh, for doing a civil engineering with us is that our faculty is mostly foreign qualified. Like as I said earlier, I did my postdoc and PhD uh, in civil engineering from the University of Toronto. For me, I did from Nottingham, I started my bachelor's in Waterloo, Canada. Um, so these are some of the screenshots of publicity. Yeah, and one of our other faculty member, he did uh, he did his PhD from uh, the uh, University Malaysia. of Technology, uh, Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, so this international exposure of the faculty uh, brings you uh, brings you uh, uh, an understanding of how the people work there in the civil engineering sector and the industry and in the teaching sector. So you you'll get that exposure uh, by interacting with uh, the faculty. Uh, who are uh, yeah. qualified to find In other words, yeah, yeah. we go abroad 
what do the people they expect from you if you want to go abroad? How do you make yourselves available to people so that they want to hire you? Um, so this was uh, just like a sample case. This was one of the uh, uh, presentations we made for the United Nations multi-stakeholder conference. This was on policy making. So you did not just have civil engineers, you had government employees, you had industry stakeholders. And the goal was for us to say the environment, things like climate change, how do we reduce carbon dioxide emissions and uh, how do we present it um, so that it doesn't uh, menu, like it doesn't harm industries to switch to a more zero net zero carbon dioxide part. So the focus here is that we have the tools and we want to teach these tools so students to be able to stand up and present these things to uh, international level. Um, to people who may not be from your field. So how to present effectively for global audience. Exactly. Uh, the other reason is uh, our international speakers. So you will get up-to-date knowledge uh, from the experts around the world, whether it's from the University of Water to Canada, whether it's from Malaysia, whether it's from Australia, or the United Kingdom or the United States. Um, recently we conducted um, sustainable housing and buildings uh, webinar you know, by the Professor Tim McCarthy, who is the director of the Sustainable Building Research Center at the University of Nova Australia. So, uh, with the with this kind of exposure, you get the novelty of the civil engineering, and you keep yourself updated uh, with the innovation that is going on in the civil engineering across the world. Uh, another reason is our research collaborations. Our undergraduate students. Uh, are conducting research uh, with the collaboration, a uh, joint collaboration from the experts around the world. Uh, let's see, uh, there's some technical glitch here. I'm not sure if that is. We have signed out because you're currently signed in on another device. Yeah. Uh, let, by the time uh, we will check uh, if there is any questions and the comment back uh, comment box so uh, we can see a lot of comments a lot of appreciation thank yeah thank you so much for your appreciation your appreciation Uh, all right, scrolling down. Um, again, thank you so much for the appreciation. And if you have any question, please feel free to drop your comment. Okay, let's continue. Uh, another reason uh, for doing Sulinian with us is our industrial collaborations. So um, we got MOUs and we got uh, understanding with the people uh, from around the globe, including the University of Nottingham. Uh, the SDH engineering from Canada, the uh, our local collaborators, the leading lo local collaborators includes Nanolite, uh, Lightweight Concrete. Um, with these things, uh, you will get international industrial uh, exposure, the local industrial uh, exposure. And if you want to pursue your career in the research sector, you will get uh, the exposure from the expert uh, across the globe. Because um, I think of it this way, when you're working with international collaborators, um, these people are already uh, well off, but they're looking for something specific, some novel ideas that they could incorporate in the industry that have questions. So the fact that they would are uh, willing to collaborate with us shows that they place us in a very high regard, right? And we want to ensure that not just the research side, but as well the industrial side is also covered with us that you want to trust students both how research works, but how the industry solves questions, cutting edge and new questions of civil engineering over time. Uh, another reason is that we constantly updating our curriculum and what does that mean? That we keep ourselves up to date with the international standard and provisions like the ASGM American standard um, for the testing materials and the civil engineering, uh, all of them. 
And uh, most importantly, our local standard, like the Higher Education Commission, the Pakistan Engineering Council. So we keep updating our curriculum and our system according to their provisions and standards uh, communicated with us time to time. Sustainability, I mean, this is something very important that our campus is sustainable campus. Uh, this this thing this thing is being overlooked in the past, but we are focusing on the sustainability at the engineering college. Uh, and this is a recent ranking by the UI Green Metric World University Rankings. We got ninth position in the private sector university in Pakistan, and tenth in the Punjab province. Uh, overall, twentieth in Pakistan, and five hundred thirty sixth in the world universities and competing at a larger scale with the world universities and getting that position is challenging. And we are growing, but we are continuously working on this thing. So uh, apart from sustainability aspect, uh, Times Higher Education, in fact, one of the leading uh, ranking uh, metrics out there, they have ranked the University of Warwick highly. Uh, according to their impact, we are third in the private sector universities, fifth in Punjab, and eighth in the Pakistan institutions, specifically for the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, which are once again becoming a key feature in our research and in the future. In quality education, we rank the first in Punjab, and we are second among Pakistan universities and 28th worldwide. So to be in the top 30 or top 50 worldwide is praise uh, uh, Overall rank is 400 to 600, which is also given the University of Law and the competition, because we're talking on a global scale here, this is a very, very good metric for us. A campus is a vibrant campus. You will get your experience by interacting with colleagues from across the country and uh, obviously, international as we've been expecting, and we have uh, we, uh, we are we do have international uh, students. So uh, you will get your exposure with them, and then uh, comes your uh, uh, your co-curricular activities. We have a lot of societies, the debating societies, the sports societies, and the community services societies. So yeah, we arrange a lot of events. Like it's difficult to show campus lifestyle and all points that we included, but. We have all the amenities. We can see one of our baseball, uh, basketball courts there. Um, we hold a lot of events like from the American Society ASCII chapter. Um, our community uh, services once again is great. So yeah, we would encourage you to come and see for yourself instead of uh, just the PowerPoint there. And we do uh, provide the capacity building activities. Uh, like you can see a snap of uh, recently uh, successfully conducted uh, capacity building activities where we do provide certification to students uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the sectors where the modern technology is involved, uh, where there is a particular skill involved. So we keep ourselves updated and we we provide the opportunity to our students to get certification and learn those things with us. Uh, you will see in the slide uh, recently conducted the building information modeling certification. Uh, the survey course where we provide uh, hands-on experience on the latest available equipment and the engineering civil engineering survey, the Autodesk 3D Max software, the ETF software, the specialized from our course, and they are so many other. Yeah. So for building information modeling, just to clarify, uh, when we were discussing construction management, uh, we saw the simulations, things like VR, those come under building information modeling and modeling information for building. Um, these are specifically, uh, we conduct this because sometimes we have things covered in the curriculum, but you know, you can't study it all in the space of four years. So we have these extra courses that students can take and they allow you to more easily join the industry workforce. So these softwares are really, that is used in the industry. Prime Aware is used in the construction management. Uh, Excel, of course, is used everywhere. So we want to kind of streamline their movement into the industry. So that's why we conduct these CBAs. Thank you. Um, recently, we've also started looking into uh, providing more initiatives for our students um, to present the findings at exposed conferences, startups, incubations, things like that. So just to give you a perspective, just last year, more than 50% of our final year design students got funding external internal. So in the more than half of the class got some sort of funding. 
Um, we were uh, uh, a project of shortlisted for the Punjab Higher Education. Hope for the Innovation Expo, you can see in the bottom right. Uh, in the top left, the capstone, basic capstone of projects, once again highlighted by PBC. Thank you. Um, and recently, at least as, as of today, we just heard that one of our students who just finished their final year design project, um, they, their idea on nano reinforcement and nano concrete was shortlisted for the World Startup Championship in 2023. Uh, this is the largest uh, expo in, in conducted in Lahore. It will be conducted next weekend, and they will have a stall there. So if you're watching this, uh, Tofi, uh, Mr. Tofi, Mr. Reed, and Ms. Brooke, congratulations to all the Congratulations, the little big congratulations. Uh, that's really the exciting news. Uh, one more thing on the bottom left, you can see uh, some of our students just, just completing now. We managed to secure jobs in hope market. And so we want to uh, polish up the resume of students, make them seem more like entrepreneurs so that people want to hire and develop the skill sets or they can do something by itself at this point in the startup. So we're trying to go in that direction so that um, once again, the aspects of civil engineers, practically social leadership, we try to imbue these in our students as much as possible. Um, so just a little information about the postgraduate training because we don't have limited time here. So we offer two courses. We have MS Civil Engineering and MS Construction Engineering and Management. Um, MS Civil Engineering is more of an advanced take on the civil engineering. But, uh, you have, once again, you have geotech structural courses, but you have more niche courses like, for example, dam engineering, you have tunnel engineering, you have uh, nanomaterial, nanotechnology, and concrete, concrete technology, different aspects. So these are more advanced courses that you would require once you've completed your undergraduate. Um, and then on the other hand, you have MS Construction Engineering and Management. We found out that some of the students, um, when they go on the job and after spending a few years working, um, they tend to prefer the management managerial aspect of it to like maybe have their own small firm, uh, have an enterprise, or to, uh, they're placed in project management. So we have an MS course that's dedicated to those understanding things like project uh, contract administration, vendor bidding, safety management. So more on management of risk, resources, economic decision analysis. This is covered in MS construction engineering and management. For our postgraduate program, we offer a very attractive scholarship program. I think the year that just passed from our last year batch, I think almost all of our students received some amount of a scholarship. Um, so you can see here on the right table, the merit scholarship, depending on your CGPA, uh, from your first semester onwards, um, you can have up to your 100% patient PA and your admission PA as well. And if you continue to secure a high GPA, you will continue to get up to 75% off in your concurrent semesters. On the left, we also have a GA or a graduate assistantship program. So if you are interested in more the teaching aspect, um, but you also want to cover your MS, these are the eligible criteria, CGP3 and other things. You can look on these details on our website or if you visit here, you can ask us or look at the prospectus. Um, so we offer a stipend for graduate assistance, depending if you meet the eligibility criteria. So we have that as well. A couple more things, our MS classes are offered in the evening because we understand some students work in the morning. So this is to make sure they don't miss classes. Um, and we also have for precision engineering and management, we have a coursework often available uh, if needed. Yeah, so uh, so far you have have uh, learned about the civil engineering that we offer and our uniqueness and the speed. So if you have uh, any question, any comments, uh, if you need any information, our number is on your screen. You can call us, you can write to us. And what we, uh, the University of Wa offer, you can always search us on the website. The website is on the stream. Our admissions are open for the uh, undergraduate and the postgraduate programs. Uh, the link is on the screen. Uh, you can apply online. Uh, also, you can follow us on the Facebook page of our civil engineering department and our YouTube channel to stay up to date with our the things that we do in the civil engineering department of the University of Guam. Uh, we have some of our recorded lectures, like the Susset McCarthy one, you can view it on our YouTube. 
Uh, if you want to see the past projects we've done, the CBA, some more information, you can visit our Facebook. Um, I would highly recommend you visit the website because it has all of our faculty profiles. Personally, if you want to ask things about the postgraduate for a program, feel free to email me. My email is on the website in the faculty profiles section on the civil engineering department. Um, please let us know if you have any questions. All right, so let's scroll down the comments and see if there is any question for us. So, Rashad, there is a question. I would need your attention on this. Uh, with the ongoing boom of software engineering, IT, computer science, and AI fields, what are the prospects of a general and basic engineering field like civil engineering? And if you do get civil engineering, what are the job opportunities for us in Pakistan and the world? Um, this is an interesting thing because recently I myself have heard a few professional certifications on AI, deep learning, things like that. Um, there is a definite need for AI. Uh, case in point, in traffic transportation, we always need an optimized because manual work of figuring out cars and things like that takes a lot of time. So figuring out patterns of flow, like where the car is flowing to, things like that, we often need things like machine learning. We have the data. Um, we can get the data from NTRC, from NHJ. So there's a lot of research on going and trying to resolve traffic issues using AI. Um, there's a lot of uh, predictive modeling and on field mixed designs, things like that. Construction management has a lot of information on just the building information modeling. Um, for example, uh, you have recently, you have 3D printed concrete. So, you know, 3D printing, you have those small 3D printers, and you know, you just use that to make some uh, gadgets here and there. But they're also really large concrete 3D printers. They basically change the game for a lot of as an engineers, because what you have now is that you have a machine that can construct an entire structure. But at the same time, how do you operate the machine? Things like that. So there's here's where you'll need an extensive knowledge on civil. Um, when you're talking about materials, like for myself, my field is nano reinforcement. I often have to go to modeling or response of this modeling or different optimization techniques, um, depending on how you use them and so on. So you have things there, uh, construction management, of course, risk management, things like that. So we have to address those things there. So you have that as well. Um, hydrology, fluid modeling, river modeling, disaster management. Uh, currently we had uh, one on the climate change. I think um, one of the FIDP groups were, did it on the impact of urbanization. Urbanization also comes down, planning also comes into civil. So they had that where they had to use AI and predictive machine learning to predict in the future which areas will become hotspots. Um, another group did it on the emergency of uh, emergency services, optimizing things like uh, ED or cheap ambulances, like where should the station be on the traffic road network so that they can access the most people. So hotspots for accidents, things like that. You need that there. Uh, safety management and construction has a lot of, uh, you know, EA software assisted uh, issues. Uh, in construction management, we showed you things about the VR, um, using that to convince clients. I have myself used the VR system and I've done the information modeling. The designs, they work very well for civil engineers. You can show them drawings and everything, but when you have um, a client who does not understand, but is willing to pay us, once they put the VR headset on and when they are able to see their building in 3D, it conveys so much information so quickly because they're like, oh, why don't you make the stairs shorter? And we're like, no, that then it will be harder to climb the stairs. But it's very hard to convince them, right? But once you put a VR headset and they're standing in front of the stairs and they look so steep, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Things like that, they require software, they require AI. And at the same time, you have to be, sometimes civil engineers are the people in the place of power. They'll be the ones who make the decision. So I recommend students now to cover, that's why we do all the CBAs and capacity-based activities. We want the students to learn these things to assist them. And um, we, don't need, we do not need to have a ded dedicated field for that. Of course, you can talk about software and AI. But if you're a civil engineer and you're going into AI, predictive modeling, using this for construction management, project management, or what have you, um, you will be in a better place to make more informed decisions 
um, you've been a better place to be hired by clients because they're like, oh, you have a civil engineering background. If you see a civil engineering, yeah, okay, we will listen to you. So that's one benefit that happens now. Yeah, in addition to this, as uh, first time you mentioned, uh, it is, as we already um, uh, focused on this thing in our presentation, is that civil engineering is civilization. So there is, uh, if there is no civil engineering, there is no civilization. So this basic or uh, major civil engineering fields like mechanical or uh, electrical and the basic engineering, they will stay there and they will be there. Now the point is the adaptability. The AI, computer science, and the, uh, the technological things, they do have an impact now. We understand that thing. But as you mentioned, adaptability is our focus, should be our focus for the basic civil engineering or other engineering uh, domains, because you have to adopt with the with the with the technology like the artificial intelligence, what they can offer in the civil engineering. So the profession itself has to be adaptable to those things. And we are focusing on those things. We are trying our best to deliver you the things which are required uh, in this domain, which can cover that gap. And an interesting point is that both the research publications have been put. I'm pretty sure one of them was on modeling and uh, machine learning, and the other one also incorporated software and one another. So even though we are civil engineers, that does not mean that you will not use AI software. In fact, with the passage of time, you will use it more and more and more. But at the same time, being a civil engineer using AI will point to a lot of civil engineering positions where you can successfully implement these brand new updated decisions. Uh, from a non-civil engineering aspect, it's very hard to convince stakeholders what you're saying is going to hold true or not. Uh, let's scroll down again if you have any more comments or uh, any questions. Comments, there are so many comments. Thank um, you for watching. Appreciation. Uh, we apologize for the small technical delays. Uh, well, I guess there is no more questions. Uh, thank you very much all for watching with us. And again, if you have any question, uh, we will have that contact and and the on the presentation and the recorded form of this video. It will be uploaded very soon. Uh, please feel free to uh, write to us, talk with us, visit our website. We would be happy to answer all of your queries and questions. Thank you very much all again. Thank you, everyone.